All right, y'all thought that I might be fibbing. This is proof right now. The Letterman Podcast. We have one sponsor, one sponsor only, but it is Rupert G and the Hello Deli. Thank you very much for sponsoring our show, Rupert. It's my honor, Mike. La 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 la. Welcome once again to the Letterman Podcast. My name is Mike Chisholm. Uh, another great episode is coming up uh, with a guy who was an intern. We're talking about the summer intern series that we do here on the Letterman Podcast, who ended up uh, being the final executive producer for um, Siskel and Ebert, which then became uh, Ebert and Roper and 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 the incarnation of um, one of the most iconic movie critic franchises i guess you'd call it um but but also you know when you talk about uh gene and roger siskel and ebert major major letterman connections there and and here we have a guy who came in as an intern and then ended up working in television for a long time for another institution and, and very very cool stories here uh coming from david Plummer. i'm i'm very excited about this episode now uh, before we get to it, two things. Number one, of course, the Letterman Podcast is one sponsor, one sponsor only, and that is Rupert Jean the Hello Deli. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to say that for, so I'm going to savor every moment. I appreciate Rupert so much. And if you're looking for Letterman merchandise of any sort, uh, late show mugs, late show t-shirts, um, all sorts of fun stuff, including Rupert merchandise, go get it. Go to hello-deli.com. Okay, so there we go. The second thing is uh, I've had quite a few people put two and two together that, um, you know, this, uh, people know that I'm Canadian. I'm from a place called Kelowna, British Columbia. I've had a lot of people put two and two together that, um, and I did put a post out in, 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 in a couple of the Letterman Facebook groups and whatnot. Yes. Uh, my city has gone through, um, some pretty significant wildfires and, uh, just want to let you know that I'm okay. That was not a certainty. Um, but we are okay. For now, there are still thousands of people that are displaced and out of their homes, and and uh, a lot of homes have been lost. Man, man, it's a it's a it's a crazy year for fires this year. Uh, we think of those in Maui and, and other places in the world. Yellowknife up here in northern northern Canada, but yeah, um, Kelowna and West Kelowna have been ravaged, uh, as have uh, other areas in the interior of British Columbia. We got these old forests that are near here, and dry, dry, dry conditions. And when it goes up, it goes up. And there was a moment where our city, um, which is a resort city here in Canada, looks like a looked like a firestorm. So I just want to say thank you very much for everybody who has reached out. Um, we had a my, Candy and I had a go bag packed. We were ready to go. Um, I had the two hard drives containing all the Letterman podcast stuff. I said goodbye to a lot of the things that I collected and took a few videos, that sort of a thing. Uh, thank goodness that didn't happen. Uh, we had evacuees. Uh, family members who were evacuated staying with us for a while it, it was a crazy crazy week this past seven days um we're still going to try and get new episodes out on time hopefully that continues to happen we've had an episode come out at least once a week uh ever since april of 2020 we're going to try and, and and keep that going um got some really good ones that are booked come moving forward uh i'll give you a little tease of a, a broadcast legend is coming on the letterman podcast an absolute legend when it comes to broadcasting is coming on the Letterman podcast. Uh, we just booked that. That's going to be happening in September. Uh, I will probably release that the moment, <laughs> the moment after we're done recording. I'll probably get it out. I'm so darn excited about it. But uh, David Plummer today, I'm excited for this one as well. As you can see during the conversation, we've got some other great ones coming up. Another intern uh, is in the can as well. And uh, although, yeah, yeah, I don't know if Molly's going to be like to be referred to as in the can. You'll see why when that episode comes out. Uh, and then a couple other ones that are happening as well. So very excited. Thank you again for people who have been asking about how we're doing. So far, we're okay. We're going to keep it that way, uh, hopefully, and things will just do nothing but get better. Um, but you're not here for that. You're here to hear uh, tales from the Ed Sullivan Theater or from 30 Rock or any other part of Letterman, the Letterman mythos. This one here. Very, very cool. David Plummer started as an intern, ended up produ executive producing Ebert and Roper uh, and much more. Enjoy. David, I am so excited that you are here today to uh, help us out with our with our summer intern series, our bonus episodes wow. focusing on uh, the interns of Late Night and Late Show with David Letterman. Uh, very, very, very cool to have you here. You got a great story. 
And one of the things that, um, that the folks who worked for the show really enjoy, I've got a lot of feedback already. They enjoy hearing where the interns ended up. I'm not certain that a ton of people from the show know where you ended up after uh, your, your run with Late Show. So I can't wait to talk about that with you. But thank you for taking time out of your day to uh, be on the Letterman podcast today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is, this is truly an honor, really. It's very cool. Oh, man, I appreciate that. The honor's all mine. Um, okay, so I want to uh, set the table here for, for when you showed up at, for your internship. Um, had you been an enthusiast of David Letterman and company before that? And uh, what was it that caused you to apply for the internship? Because it's not like um, the internships were, you know, online and, and, and the way that it is. It, it was a very different time back then when you were an intern. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, uh, first of all, I was a huge fan of Dave's and of the show in general every night watching it, uh, you know, and just thought the world of him. And that's really obviously what got me kind of interested in because he would always do bits with interns. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, why couldn't I do that? So anyway, I just sort of threw my resume out there to them. I found out who the intern coordinator was and uh, threw it out there. And to my surprise, they called me and wanted me to come out for an interview. And uh, I was shocked. I mean, I, I don't, you know, didn't at the time know anybody in the business or anything. So went out there, uh, had to do like seven different interviews with all the different departments. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So you actually did the, 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 it's funny because some people did the gauntlet and some people didn't do the gauntlet. So you actually did the gauntlet. Uh, where were you I going did. to school at the time? Uh, so I actually was straight out of high school and I sent my resume into him. Uh, so I was just 18 when I got it and hadn't actually started college yet. So it was pretty cool. Wow. Straight yeah. out of high school, straight into the Ed Sullivan Theater. Uh, what city were you in in high school? Uh, Warsaw, Indiana, a uh, small town up north. So, yeah, it was kind of a, kind of a cool thing <laughs> to be able to do that. Dave from Indiana got to go out and, there. And, so. Okay, talk about that growing up. Uh, because I know, I know where I'm from in Western Canada. Whenever somebody actually, not just Western Canada, whenever somebody in Canada makes it big, makes it good, uh, you know, down south, um, you know, we always have this sort of national pride from that. It's a, it's a, it's a sort of an inferiority complex uh, that I think that, uh, most of us Canadians have. But that's a state thing too. Like when somebody from your state goes and and makes it big somewhere, um, hmm. that's a big deal. Growing up in Indiana, you guys were all aware of the meteoric rise of David Letterman, weren't you? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, it's you know David Letterman, John Mellencamp. Uh, you know, a few others you can name off, but Dave is right up there at the top of the list for, for me specifically, but I think for a lot of people in Indiana. So what year are we talking? What, what was your grad year? So I graduated high school in 1994, uh, ended up at Letterman in 1995. Um, and uh, yeah, it kind of went from there and we formed, you know, it's funny how the interns kind of form a little family, or at least we did. Um, you know, I can only explain it or sort of describe it. It was like the real world kind of like we yep. all sort of, you know, we didn't live together, but, uh, we all pretty much lived together. We were always at each other's places and leaning on each other to, to survive in the city. So, okay. Well, survive in the city. That's so you're Indiana, you know, Dave, you know, works in the big apple. Obviously mm -hmm. New York has this you know, this magnetic pull, it's one of the greatest cities that this world has ever seen. Um, you know, did, did you feel the pull to New York and had you been there before or was like, were you like totally the stranger in the strange land? I had been there once before and, uh, you know, and this was for like two or three days, I had had a chance to go out there and check it out. But I was, I was pretty much, you know, I felt like a stranger in a strange land. Um, and, and like I said, as young as I was, it was really amazing. But at the same time, it, it was so much fun. So it was a little, a, a little bit daunting, but at the same time, I felt like I was right where I belonged. You get out of high school and, uh, or, or before you're getting out of high school, probably, uh, or, or maybe it's like during the summer, whatever, you get correspondence back from the show saying, we want to interview you. Um, is that like you running to the parents and going, that's the most oh. exciting day of your life. And, and can we make this happen? And how can we make this happen? And is that, Abs was it a family trip that for the interview or how did that go? 
Yeah, it actually, it was a family trip. We all went out there and uh, I did the gauntlet and then we came home pretty quickly. But yeah, it, it was, you know, when I got the news that I actually got the internship, I mean, I freaked out. I, I couldn't believe that I had a chance to get it because I, I don't, I don't know how many people, you know, apply every, or applied every semester, but I imagine it was a lot. And uh, I was just blown away that I got the chance to do it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the actual interview day itself. I mean, you talk about the Ed Sullivan Theater in 1994. Uh, the 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 activity around that place hmm. still buzzing beyond measure. David Letterman at one point, you know, as, as he made the big uh, the, the the as the late shift happened, you know, one of the biggest celebrities on the planet. Uh, everything, just the action happening outside of the Ed Sullivan Theater, electric, um, you know, you guys show up there. And do you remember that day? Well, is it seared into your memory? Is that or is it one of those things where you're like, it just went by so fast, it was a blur and you don't remember much? I, I think, well, it definitely was was a blur. I think I just kept reminding because I, you know, I was nervous, you know, obviously, sure. I just had to keep reminding myself to just be myself and not get caught up in and everything that I, you know, and what I was actually doing, I was just having conversations with people and thinking this, this was really cool and having a chance to pick their brains yeah. uh, as well. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Um, you know, it certainly was a blur, um, but I ended up in the right department. I think I ended up in the research department yep. uh, where Matt Roberts and Jay Johnson and Tom Ruprecht were all my bosses in the, in the, uh, the research department. And I learned a ton from them. So, Oh, you just, you just uh, uh, picked a murderer's row of <laughs> very kind, very intelligent, very funny, very sharp people. Um, yep. Wow. You go in and you get to, you get to, to, to study, study under these people. I guess Matt probably would have just taken over for Kellison as a segment producer at that point. Right. Like, cause I think he, I think he had started as a, as a researcher, I believe. That could that could be. I know my semester he was definitely still in the research department. So oh, he, he may was have, still okay. He was still in the research department. So he was yeah. kind of getting ready to ascend in. Then okay. Yes. So this is, yes. Wow. And uh, and and with Tommy and uh, man, you just you 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 literally picked three legendary names. Jay Johnson, by the way, little factoid. I'm hoping to get him on here sooner than later. We've had a few conversations. Jay Johnson, <laughs> the only person right now who worked for the original late night and works for the current incarnation of late night uh, with Seth Myers. He's the only person right now oh. on staff that does that. So there's a little factoid for everybody right there. That is um, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did, now. Okay. So you do the interview, uh, you go through all the departments research uh, it takes a shining to you. Um, you know, I think people who are probably under 35 uh, at the time of this broadcast, you know, we're in 2023 as, as, as we record this, um, probably have a different they probably look at the word research and define it differently than guys like you and i do uh yeah. there was no google the internet was in its very 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 prehistoric infancy at this point um mm -hmm. you know the research department even when dave uh, when he retired you know he talked about uh in his last speech on his last uh late late show he talked about, you know, the researchers, they live in this subterranean lair and he kind of threw back to the idea of being a researcher. When you get the call saying that they've accepted you and you're going to be a researcher, did you have any idea what that meant? Uh, boy, an intern in the research department. I had no idea what that really meant, because like you said, that was before the internet. I mean, not before the internet, maybe, but it was right on the cusp of the internet. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I had no idea what it meant. And little did I know it was basically going to mean a lot of trips to BlackRock because we did a lot of a uh, lot of research there. And so it was a lot of interns going through microfiche and trying to find articles on different celebrities. And because what we would do is we would every day we would put together a packet, a research packet for Dave um, on whoever the guest was for that night. So you can imagine that was a lot of work and you wanted it to be really good because you knew it was going to be sitting right in front of Dave. You knew for sure that he was looking at it. Uh, so it, it was a lot of work, but uh, you know, I think that was something and, and really being in the research department in general and having 
uh, Jay and Matt and Tom, I was so lucky to be in that department and to have, you know, cause a lot of people can go into TV and they got real jerks for bosses or they've got people that don't want to sit and teach them or don't want, you know, that was not the case. I was so lucky to have them uh, being the ones teaching me because I use those researching skills all throughout my career into my next jobs um, because I knew what it meant to put together good research. Oh, that's a really good point. Like, like um, you know, because you had to be so there wasn't just a Google to, 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 to check out there was no imdb like even, right. even a tool like the imdb saves hours and hours and hours from a process like you're describing yep. um do you remember your first week on the job do you remember any of the the, the first people that you would have done this with uh or, or done a research packet for Oh boy. The first, I don't remember the first guest I did a research packet for. I, I remember my first week, um, you know, I, just seeing, being completely overwhelmed by the amount of research packets they have, because there are filing cabinets just filled, you know, at the time they're just filled with research packets. Because they save they, them, obviously. Obviously they, they have save them all for the next time. So yeah, next time Robin Were they Williams digitized here, or was yeah. it just old school? Files. It was old school <laughs> files, big old filing cabinets, and you went yep. through them. And uh, that I definitely, I definitely remember being daunting. And a lot of the first week was spent, you know, getting to know the other interns, because uh, you really have to build sort of a trust between one another um, to be able to do your job, because you need somebody to back you up and make sure that, you know, things don't fall through the cracks. So a lot of that week was getting to know the interns, figuring out our way around the building, figuring out who was on what floor and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this is a great question. So what floor were you, was, was the research department on? I believe that was the 11th floor. I believe okay. that was the 11th floor. I, I could be wrong, but I, and yeah. Dave was on 14. Is that the, I, I, I think, think that's, that's right. The, I think that's what it was. Um, this is, <laughs> this is so fun. Uh, because I, I I think back to that time, I can remember shows from 95. Uh, wait, you were part of the hypnosis show. The hypnosis show happened before that, didn't it? Yeah, no, I don't. I wasn't part of that. Matt, I, I just like to bring up the hypnosis show just in case Matt Roberts gets scared that I'm going to show the picture of him hypnotized. He was one of the interns <laughs> that was hypnotized. Oh, uh, man. Iconic moments. Uh, you're a high school kid, um, you know, working with people who are essentially all older than you was there anybody else who was your age there um i mean the other interns were you know it, it, we ranged in age from me eight, 18 up to i think there might have been one that was 23 or 24 at the time um so yeah i was definitely the youngest one of our internship group yeah did you all get off a uh, shift at the same time um you know i think the writing interns were there longer uh yeah. than the rest of us were but yeah it was always you know we'd always leave and all the interns would go over to ye old triple in i don't know if you know what that is but it's a bar that was right around the corner from uh from the late show ye old triple in i've heard of mcgee's um you know mcgee's was talked about a lot because uh uh you know um craig and carter uh bays when they made how i met your mother they huh. based uh, the bar and how I met your mother on McGee's where they used to go after the show all the time. Yield. To, oh. I haven't heard of that one there. That's uh, uh, yep. I, I want to do more research on that. Thank you very much. A little, <laughs> sure. Little sure. Thing. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, bury away a lot of memories uh, in the walls of that place. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, where did you, okay. So New York, it's new to you, small town, Indiana, you show up in your New York city. Where did you, uh, where did you end up staying? Uh, I lived on 42nd and second street called Tudor city. And, uh, it was just a big, big high rise. And, uh, it was me and another intern and eventually became three of us, uh, three of us interns living in a one bedroom, one bedroom apartment. Um, did you have a bathroom? Yes, we did have a bathroom. So that was good. Um, but the two of it, so I was the one that found the apartment. So I got the bedroom and then oh, there was a, yeah, it was good. It worked out for me. Um, and then the other two, uh, we had beds out in the living room, the other space, the only other space in the, in the apartment. So, um, what an adventure. I mean, the fact that you can say that you did this at 18, uh, you learned the skills that you did. It stretched you the way it did for later on in life. And we're going to get to that because you ended up at a very, very cool place after Late Show, but obviously we've got lots of meat on this bone still. Um, you were there, so you were there over the fall and winter season, correct? 
Yes, that's right. We got, got through, a I think we, I did get a jacket and unfortunately I'm devastated by it is we can't find my Letterman jacket anywhere. And it's so upsetting to me. <laughs> it was at my parents' house and somehow it has gone missing and I'm so devastated. 95, that would have been, that would have been late show on the back. That would have been that jacket, right? Yeah, that's right. That's uh, right. Oh, that's so maybe nuts. one day, maybe one day we'll we'll come come across it. So, <laughs> oh, that would talk about buried treasure. Wouldn't that be fun? It um, would. Man, okay. So let's talk a little bit about a typical day uh, for you. And I mean, like, I, I'm 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 super curious. You talk about going to Black Rock, um, you know, the big CBS uh, a labyrinth of 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 broadcasting administrative madness um going over to that place was that an was that a daily thing like what did your day talk about a typical day was there a typical day or were they all different um i don't think there was really a typical day i think it depended on you know who the guest was uh, for that evening but i i know you know beginning of the day there are meetings going on and the intern's function i think was to do intern things like go get coffee make some copies you know, do that kind of thing. And then we would get into more about preparing for that night show um, of what we needed to do to help prepare for that night show. And, and that could be any number of things. I mean, we didn't just do research. So the interns, even though they all are in a department, we all sort of did other things as well, other interny things as well. Um, but it could be anything like once I, uh, Shaquille O'Neal was on the show and they wanted, Dave apparently wanted to find a size 22 shoe so that he could hold it up, you know, at the desk. And so that was, that was my mission. And I, I don't remember the name of the place that I found it at, but I got the shoe and Dave was able to hold it up on air. And that was really cool. Cause I never thought I would, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. I thought I was going to disappoint them. So, so you struck uh, out a couple times along the way. There's a special kind of pressure. You're in the streets of New York. Try, like probably, you probably start with a phone book. I would assume back then, like, again, you can't Google anything. It's, yeah. it's a different time. <laughs> Yeah, we just started calling around to to different uh, you know shoe stores, and eventually found a place that actually had a size twenty two. So yeah, oh, that's fun. Yeah, but yeah, typical day. It, it was. It, it could be any number of things, um, but it was always exciting. Always a lot of running around and trying to you know. Uh, trying to figure out what was most important, what you really needed to do right now. And, and, and for me, it was always just not wanting to disappoint anyone. I just wanted to come through on every single thing. So. Um, I'm super curious about, you know, folks who were the segment producers and the, uh, uh, and the researchers, their support team of the segments uh, and, 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 and who were, you know, in the guest, uh, you know, relations for lack of a better term. I, I'm fascinated by that. Did you, because I, you know, you do all this work, for a seven minute segment or an eight minute segment um, percentage of time that you would watch the segments. Like, did you get a chance to see the show and, and, and did you have a different filter when you watch the show? Because you're like, Oh, I wonder if he's going to ask about this, or I wonder if he's going to ask about that. Like you must've had a different lens, how you viewed the show. Yeah, I, definitely. Cause you would find things that you would hope he would bring up, you know, like you'd find something else, you know, something about a celebrity that I find really interesting. And I, my hope was Dave would find it really interesting too. And so, yeah, I would definitely watch along and sort of be like, Oh, I hope he asks him this. Um, but yeah, we watched, you know, I watched every, every night if I wasn't able to watch it, uh, you know, at the, at Sullivan theater, I was definitely watching it at home later that night. Um, Cause I, I loved the show and actually then being there for the show, I wanted to, soak in every second of it so the, there are a slice of people me being you know one of them that as you say that just the vicariousness and 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 well the righteous envy just unbelievable jealousy that you got to check that what you just said the fact that you actually contributed to the show and then even if it was in the apartment at home you watched the show at that night and you have a completely different uh depth of observation of this amazing program you're 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 in it you're part of it and i mean talking to you on the phone one i can tell that even to this day you're still grateful to be part of that and and that's that seems to be something that's common with everybody who who, who was there 
from the people who were there 32 years all the way back to the people who were there for six months as an intern, um, so many folks seem to be just grateful that they got to be a part of something like this. It was something that was really, really special. But you were 18 at the time. <laughs> did you know it? Were you like, were you present at that point and know it? Or was it like through the years of wisdom and, and experience that have gone by, you now look back on it and like, holy cow, I can't believe I was a part of that. The, you know, I... I do think that I knew what was going on at the time. I think I could grasp it because even, you know, that has always been basically one of my favorite chunks of my life. It always has been that, that six months there. Um, and I think I knew what a big deal it was uh, to be an intern on that show. And, you know, had I not, had I not gotten that internship, it could have changed everything. I mean, I may never have pursued what I pursued in life. And uh, cause you know, the odds of me working, you know, the odds of me working on a TV show, maybe not as good if I had not had gotten that internship. So. Yeah. It's a hell of a thing to have on the resume as, as well. Um, hmm. Especially for someone so, so young, like, you I mean at, at, at 19 or 20, you know, you've done it now, but it's <laughs> sitting there on the resume for the rest of your life, which is, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I want to go back to some moments uh, now. It's funny talking to some of the segment producers from back then and how, you know, I always say, did you, did you, did you give somebody a good line, you know, that really, really hit well. And they're, 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 um, uh, they're a little bit, they don't want to talk about it as much. They're a little hesitant to talk about it because, you know, they don't want to take the shine off of whoever that celebrity or that star was, which sure. I, I just love that. And I, as, as I'm saying that you're nodding, like you're understanding where I'm coming from, like, like, because it was a team, you guys wanted to just make it the best show that you could. And I, I appreciate that very much. That being said, um, you researched a lot of stuff. There were a lot of moments in that time, um, you know, whether it's Dave throwing out a piece of footage from somebody from the past or, or bringing up something, you know, where, where, where um, you know, a celebrity uh, talked about something unique or interesting to make their segment that way. Um, do you have any memories specifically of things that you researched that did make the show that you were kind of proud of or any moments in the show that you were proud of? Oh boy. That is one that is hard for me to really remember. I mean, I, you know, I certainly did a lot of work on every show while I was there, just in terms of the researching and, and running around. Yeah. Um, but it is, it really does kind of become a blur. I mean, I met so many celebrities and because because you're there in that building, you just never know who you're going to bump into or who you're going to see. Um, I'm trying to think of one that really sticks out for me. Uh, I mean, again, Shaquille O'Neal, I met him after yep. finding those shoes, but yeah, I can't really think of one in general. I mean, you know, I gave John Stewart a cigarette once before he was, <laughs> Before he was John Stewart, I, sure. I definitely oh, yeah. remember that. I mean, he was John Stewart, but not quite as big. No, I um, had a holding deal with him. Like, uh, yes, no, he exactly. Was, he was connected to the show. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and just meeting all the all the the different writers that they were. I was kind of in awe of, of the writers as well, just because that's such a such a mythical thing when you think of the Letterman Show. You know uh, what that writers' room must be like. So. Okay, so the brain will keep going and maybe something comes up. And if it doesn't, if sure. it does come up, please, please interrupt. Um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to get back to the writers here in a second, because those are some of my favorite people to this day to meet is just the odd concoction of personalities that made up that writer's room from the different eras. They are so much fun. Uh, you know, Tommy and, and Matt being two of the chief ones that were, you know, that you mentioned them already that you worked with them. Uh, but right. here's a question for you. When uh, did you meet uh, Gene Siskel or Roger Ebert at Letterman? You know, I did not meet them at Letterman, even though they were there, you know, all the time. Often, and I, yeah. Uh, yeah, all the time. And I know, you know, they both love Dave uh, very much. I, I mean, they and they competed on that show, who would get the best line, who would get the biggest laugh, um, you know. And so, but I, I did not meet them on the show. Well, and that's one of the ones I'm going to get a segment producer to talk about those guys. And and by the way, the reason I brought up Siskel and Ebert, everybody, is uh, Dave ended up, David here ended up working uh, for that show and that program and 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 exec producing it at the at the end of the day. Um, and so, you know, that's that's why I brought them up specifically. But I want to talk about them on 
uh, you know, we'll get to that after, you know, uh, yeah. but I, I, they, they, those two guys uh, <laughs> were two of my very, very favorite guests. I loved when they were on there. Uh, guys like Charles Grodin or, or, or some other people, Harrison Ford's probably another good example were people who showed up with not even quite a shtick, but like they had a personality or they had a, they had a direction they were definitely going. And those two, when they would just rip on each other, it, <laughs> yeah, they would. I mean, because I mean, you see them at, at the movies or the two, you know, the greatest, uh, you know, America's arguably most famous movie critics, yeah. and 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 they're pretty straight laced. But then you see them on Letterman, and you see them cutting the way that they were. It was a, it was really, really fun to see that. They were two of my very favorite guests of all time. And you could tell Dave liked having them on, I feel like, because he could kind of just hand it off to them and let them bicker. And that's the that's the segment, you know. Um, but I know one of their favorite uh, bits that they did, Gene and Roger's favorite bits that they did with Dave was he took them door to door in New Jersey, Gene and Roger. And it, I looked, tried to look for that bit today on YouTube and I can't find it anywhere, but that, I know that was one of their favorite things they'd ever, ever done in media was that door to door thing. So. I think that might be um, in a collection on Don Giller's channel. And if so, I will make sure I find it for you when I get it for you. But uh, I mean, that's certainly a moment you think about, you know, um, Walter and the crew at the Letterman YouTube channel, they're doing such a good job by getting these clips out there. That's one that I'm certain will end up on the official channel. Good, um, good. I, I hope point, it does. That was, that was gold. Absolute yeah. gold. Mm. Um, and also, you and I were talking about this a little bit too. I, I was nice to kind of give you this little uh, little tip. If, you, if, if anybody out there wants to watch something that's very entertaining with Dave, that isn't the actual uh, show itself, go find the CBS, the very first press conference that Dave did with cbs um and it was uh larry tish and, and and everybody there announcing that 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 dave was officially coming over um gene siskel a reporter in his own right you know with press credentials was at the press conference and he actually asked a question or two during the scrum uh <laughs> with dave at the podium and i mean being just absolutely laser sharp with his answers it's so it's 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 27 minutes i think it is and it's so entertaining and then at the end of the clip, if you watch the one on Don Giller's channel, at the end of the clip, they actually interview Gene Siskel um, there as, as well. So that's a that's a pretty neat Letterman moment with Siskel and Ebert. Um, yeah. I want to go back to uh, to the writers a little bit. I as well am in awe, in awe of, of, of that collection of people. Um, did you get a chance to see, like, I guess you would have seen how the sausage gets made. You would have seen some of these, uh, these things, you know, produced in, in these segments and things like that. Um, did it spark the creative bug in you? Like you were there as a high school student. You didn't necessarily <laughs> know you were going to get into TV or broadcasting or anything like that. Was it contagious? Did it make you want to be creative as well? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, it made me know that this is what I want to do. Um, you know, it, it, it let me know that, TV and and essentially that kind of TV that was uplifting and fun and you know that that was what I wanted to be a part of. Um, so yeah, that certainly certainly affected me in that way. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, yeah. Before we kind of you know, I, I want to talk about I want to talk about the entire encompassing experience for you there uh, while you were in New York. Um, you know, you're there for a few months, whatever homesick at all was it was it uh was it was it all you know high intensity and you were just had your head down and you were doing this this thing or were there were there times of downtime where you're like holy cow this is overwhelming um i never felt overwhelmed like to the point where i was like oh my god you know i i certainly it's overwhelming coming to new york and walking into the ed sullivan theater for the first time is just mind-blowing and knowing that you're going to work there uh you know, all of that is mind blowing, but, you know, in terms of homesickness, I did pretty well. I think my parents actually came out to visit me once and, you know, so it, I, I wasn't for lack of seeing them all together. And we certainly talked at least it, probably every day is my guess, if I remember right. Um, but it definitely, you know, was a big deal in my life at the time. And, and I, I think I, I think I, I recognize that and, Never, never felt like I was in over my head though. Oh, that's awesome. What did they yeah. think of the, uh, was there, was there sticker shock when they saw the size of the apartment for the first time? 
uh, when they saw the price of the apartment and the size of the apartment, <laughs> what yes, you were getting, were. yeah. I, and I was really, really fortunate in that that my parents were able to help me with that because not everybody would be able to do that. So that was that was a huge a huge thing uh, that they were able to support me in that way. Um, before we move on, real quick, I had yes, one sir. more. I had an intern story to yes, tell. Sir. So when I applied for the internship, you know, you have to fill out a questionnaire, basically all sorts of different stuff. And one of the questions is, can you drive a stick shift? And I'm thinking, A, I couldn't drive a stick shift. And so I just put yes, because I'm thinking, what, who's going to you know, make me drive a car? So anyway, get into the internship. It's the first or second week. Uh -huh. And I get a call from Lori Diamond in Dave's office that they want me to take Dave's car, a Porsche, to get it washed. And here's me. And I had to fess up and say like, I'm sorry, I said that I could, I could drive a stick, but I can't, because I was just imagining myself trying to dive, drive Dave's Porsche, you yeah. know, around New York City. Yeah. Uh, so I had to fess up, but they were cool about it. But that was, that was one of my things is I totally lied about being able to drive stick shift and it came back to bite me. So. And you got, and you got busted by it. Um, got busted. I love, that's so charming to me, by the way. Uh, you're not the first, second, or even third. I don't even think you're the fourth person. Uh, to tell a story that's very, very, very similar about uh. Dave's car and and being at that position. Like, I love the fact that it is such a common occurrence uh. that an intern might have to grab Dave's car somewhere or take Dave's car somewhere or do something with it. Yep. I, it's charming to me that on the questionnaire, one of the questions is, can you drive a stick shift? And it's actually uh. a legitimate question that has to do with the with the position. I adore that. And that, that's exactly really You're the first person that says that you got busted by it. Um, <laughs> and, and that's, that's, that's super, super cool. Um, yeah. So, okay. You talked about, you know, times that you actually watched the show. Did you ever watch it from the theater or was it always from a monitor inside the office building? It was always from a monitor. I think the interns typically, we tried to stay out of the backstage area yep. and, and I don't think we were really allowed out in the, unless it was part of a bit or they were sitting in a seat, you know, yeah. uh, something like that. But they, the interns were, were pretty much, you know, encouraged to not be around uh, the backstage area as much as possible. Cause really you're just getting in the way too many people yep. back there. Yeah. Did you, were you ever part of a bit? I was Paul McCartney's brother Tito in uh <laughs> it was some bit and it's for some reason Paul McCartney had a bunch of brothers and I was Tito but it was just a picture of me they just used a picture of me uh it said that I was Paul McCartney's brother did it make air it did it did it was a really quick bit but um yeah it was on air and I thought it was the coolest thing ever and was telling everybody but it was like a split second that you could see me so <laughs> do you have the clip I don't. I I'll don't see if have I can it. find it for you. No. Um, All right. So, so like, because to me, as you just described that, uh, that's the the joke, right? If it's a picture with all the names of the brothers, Tito is kind of the joke, obviously. Yeah, I think that's exactly. That's fantastic. Do yeah. you remember who wrote it? I don't. I don't yeah. know who wrote that one. Yeah. Just assemble everybody for a for a, for a picture. Let's let's do this. Um, that's fantastic. That's that's very very charming. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, before we kind of move on here, uh, I think it's time for a commercial. Uh, the Letterman sure. Podcast is brought to, we've got one sponsor, one sponsor only, and that is Rupert G and the Hello Deli. Uh, you can still, for a few little while, because he's selling the deli now, it's an iconic moment in, uh, in New York culinary entertainment, I guess we can call it. <laughs> um, you know, a landmark in, in, in New York. Uh, you know, the mayor came out there and did some cool things at the at the Hello Deli a couple years ago. Rupert G, Rupert and May uh, selling the deli. But right now you can still go to hello-deli.com. You can get yourself a late show mug. You can get yourself a late show t-shirt. And uh, Rupert packs these things himself. If you ask him really nicely, he may add onions to your order. Go to hello-deli.com and you can find uh, Late Show with David Letterman merchandise. Or Rupert, get, get, get a Rupert t-shirt because... They are definitely going to be collector's items soon. Um, you know, we take for granted the fact we think things are going to be here forever, but no, not so much. And uh, we've got a couple of things. Rupert talked about how he's he'll announce the official what's happening here on this show. So we'll talk about that moving forward. But uh, I Good. assume you probably uh, ate a time or two at the a super sandwich at the Hello Deli. Absolutely. I was there. I feel like we were there almost every day, whether it was for ourselves or for somebody on the staff. We were we were down there a lot. And Rupert 
he really is the nicest guy. He, he always had time for us. If he found out we were interns, he was so cool. Um, I wonder if he sells jackets at the, does he sell the Letterman jackets at the Hello Deli or no? Nope. Uh, well, anyway, uh, he was great <laughs> oh, along with heart, everybody else for you. Dave. I know along with everybody else, you know, he was, he just was the nicest guy. So, uh, too bad to hear that he's moving on, but it's great that he's a sponsor. Absolutely. And, and it's a celebration for him. You know, it's, it's 30 something years of, 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 um, incredible work that he could never in a million years have predicted. Uh, he's like you say, he's like, he's like God took the word kind and made it into a human being. He's just the uh, kindest yeah. man and so grateful. Um, I don't know if a conversation goes by cause I mean, we talk quite a bit. Um, and, 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 uh, I don't know if a conversation goes by where he doesn't use the word blessing in conjunction with like he, they're his family. You guys are all his family. Um, mm -hmm. he loved every single one of you. So, so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's bittersweet. It's, it's, it's sweet for him and you want him to just have the best life ever, uh, as he moves to the next phase, but it's bitter because, you know, you just think, Oh, if ever I'm in New York, I could just go by the hello deli, but that's no not more be the case anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, it will be the case. It just won't be Rupert there. Right. Um, okay. Um, okay. So you didn't, so ironically, not once did you watch a show in the Ed Sullivan theater? Boy, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever got to actually sit. Now, what I did get to do, which was really cool, is I would get to, every once in a while, would get to see a band uh, in rehearsal. Uh, cool. So I'd get to go down for rehearsal. And I remember, like, Tracy Chapman, I think, did Fast Car. And I got, oh. to, and I got to sit and watch that. Um, yep trying to think of who else. I think I saw Pearl Jam in there. Um, <laughs> it, it was crazy. And being able to see that kind of stuff, you know, obviously I didn't know who Tracy Chapman was at the time, but looking back now, it's like, wow, that's, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we, we saw a lot of, I definitely saw at least five uh, bands during that time. So yeah. never the, never the huge ones. Like if you two was showing up or something, it was like, nope, no interns down here for yeah. rehearsal. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it's funny it though, because cool. like you mentioned like Pearl Jam, you know, massive relationship with Dave, with Dave that developed, but you saw it kind of in its infancy. You saw Pearl Jam when they were kind of making their making their way. And Dave did that whole thing uh, where he would keep uh, singing black, and then one night mm. Eddie Vedder shows up and does a thing. And and the relationship with the show. Fast forward a few decades, Pearl Jam goes into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Who inducts him? David Letterman. So that's very you saw, cool. You saw some pretty cool historic uh, bridge building happening at yeah. that point. That's 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 awesome. Um. So, okay, the internship is coming up to an end. Um, you're in the apartment with two other guys, uh, mm -hmm. two other interns, and and um, you know that it's coming to an end. Are you like, now you're just out of high school, so was the plan college for sure? Was there a party that was like, I do not want this to end. I want to apply for a job. Like, was there mm -hmm. any uh, part of you that was... Did you know yeah. that you were going to go back and was it predetermined and, and this is just what's going to happen or was there some uncertainty there? Um, I, you know, I knew, I, I mean, I knew I was going to college. I, there was, there was no way that my parents would have uh, allowed me to, to stick around out there. I don't think, I mean, you know, aside from if they were offering me some great full-time job, maybe yeah. they'd say, okay, but I knew I had to go to school. And so, yeah, I ended up, um, at Columbia College in Chicago. Yep. <clears throat> and one of the days uh, where it was one of the first days of class and somebody mentioned that Cisco and Ebert were looking for interns and nobody else was interested. And I think it was maybe an age thing, you know, Gene and Roger, they, they've been around for a lot of years. Maybe the younger crowd wasn't as into them. I happened to be huge fans of theirs and just big movie fan in general. Um, and so I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> why wouldn't I try to intern for them? Um, and I ended up getting that internship largely because of the Letterman internship. Had I not done the Letterman thing, I never would have, I don't think I would have ever had a chance at Cisco and Ebert. Did they ever ask you about it? Oh yeah, they talked about Letterman all the time. And, and uh, you know, they they certainly enjoyed their time out there, but they that was the thing that, that got me that interest because it was a very small staff. You're talking four people, four or five yeah. people, you know, on the, on that, on that staff. So they needed people, you know, when you get an intern and you, you get them for 
uh, three or four months or a full semester, you know, you want to make sure that they're legit, you know, that they're going to be able to do the job. And, and me having a successful internship at Letterman did, sealed the deal for me. So, um, so as you're going to, to Columbia, um, what was your, what was your focus of study and did, did it change at all? Um, uh, you know, during that very stretching process of being an intern for, for, for Dave intern for, did, did you switch from, you know, English to broadcasting or anything like that? Or did, did you just kind of continue on? Yeah. You're going to get your, uh, your degree. Uh, what did you study? I, I studied television film. Um, yeah. and yeah, I was, I was hooked. I mean, as soon as I got out to, to Letterman, I was hooked on it and knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I went to Columbia college in Chicago and which is a, a big liberal arts school. Yeah. Um, you get tons of hands-on work when it comes to television and film. And so it was just, it was a great fit for me because it was, you know, knowing what I already wanted to do, it, it made a ton of sense. What, uh, what kind of, tons of hands-on experience. What kind of stuff did you do there? That was, that was fun. Oh, you got to make short films. You were part of an actual live, you know, broadcast every, every day. And uh, you could, you know, you wrote soap operas and game shows and talk shows and all sorts of stuff. And you actually got to live that stuff out and me kind of knowing how the sausage was already made, yep. uh, got to make my own adjustments and, my own uh you know basically put my two cents in on a lot with even the professors and say hey you know if you do it like this it'd be a lot more real to life and how they actually do it on a real tv show you know so that was that was helpful in those times too that is super awesome i love that uh very very <laughs> much by the way uh i've said awesome so many times now that i know that i am going to get <laughs> Uh, a message from Don Giller telling me to knock it off. He calls me Chris Farley if I use the word awesome too many times. That's going to happen. <laughs> um, but I got to, uh, so, okay, let's let's spill it here. Uh, obviously, you, you, uh, you know, obviously between you and me, because we've talked about this, you got a chance to intern for Dave again. When the Late Show showed up in Chicago, Yeah. You got a, did you get a call? Did you hear they were coming to Chicago and you reached out to that? How did that happen? You know, I got a call from them, actually. And I think it was that they were just looking for anybody that was in the Chicago area. I, you know, I had an intern, a friend of mine that was an intern that got hired on right away, yeah. right after our internship was over. And I think her name's Sarah Eyed. And I think she may have been the one to say, hey, you know, David Plummer's in Chicago. He could help us during that time. Um, you know, so that that ended up working out. But yeah, Sarah worked on the show for a, a long time. Uh, I'd after, love to talk to her as well, show. obviously, as part yeah. of our intern series here. Um, so, so you get the call. Were you shocked? Uh, no, I wasn't shocked. I was excited, though, uh, because, you know, you go, you leave something like the Letterman show and all that excitement and you go to college and it's just like, oh, like, <laughs> I got to. Like, I got to do this. Like, I want to go do that again. And I want to get paid to do <laughs> yeah. I want to get paid to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was, that's something sort of hard to get over, but then bringing that, when they called me about that, that was definitely a boost um, because, you know, I got to, got to go and, and see all those people again and, and got to work on the show again, which was great. Just a shot in the arm. Now, obviously, um, you know, your, your research is, 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 is different and all that kind of, stuff. I assume you didn't do any research when they came to Chicago, you were doing you had different duties. That was all about running around and getting anyone what they needed. And yeah, just being there at any, you know, at, at their beck and call to make sure that we can provide whatever they need to pull the show off. Yeah. Um, were any of your former interns there and in a different position at that point? I can imagine uh, like Matt would have probably moved up at that point and, and, and whatnot. Yeah, I, I none of the interns, uh, except for Sarah, I think she was the only one that stayed uh, there might have been one other that stayed on, um, yeah. but but yeah, that's that's all I can think of in terms of anyone that would have moved up. Other than Matt and Tommy, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, did you watch those shows live? 
Um, I don't think I did. I think it was a very similar situation. Yeah, I don't think I... Now, I did eventually get to go to a show. Uh, this was way after yeah. I, I just happened to be in New York and I got to go to one of the shows and sit in the audience. So that Did you was call in a favor something. for that one or did you send in the way that we all did uh, for your ticket? No, I, I definitely called in a favor for that one. Uh, yeah, Sarah, was Sarah, my friend again, was able to, to get yeah. me a t- ticket. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's charming. I just, I, I love, I love the fact that you got a chance to work with them again and it got a chance to get that shot in the arm for you while you were still in college. Yeah. Um, okay. So you were, what year did you go all four years to college? I, it actually took me longer than yep. it took me. I, I did the Chris Farley thing where it took me eight years to finish college and I still wasn't a doctor. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it took me a long time because once I started working full time, I know we're going to get to that in a little bit, but I yep. was working full time and then going to school at night. So it definitely took me a while to, to finish my schooling. So let's get to that. Where were you working full time? Uh, so Cisco and Ebert. So I ended up, you know, getting that internship, which was yep. a full time, full time internship at the time. So it was five days a week and a uh, busy guy. Well, that's it busy. was, I was busy and going to school, you know, the rest of the time. And, uh, eventually got hired on. They all seemed to really like me and I really liked all of them. So um, I got hired on as a production assistant and had several different titles over the years, but uh, eventually became a producer. And then the, at the very end of the show, executive producer. So. Yeah, that is. Uh, and okay. So I'm trying to remember Gene passed in 99, right? Correct. It was February of 99. Yeah. Right. And the reason that, I know that is because I'm a gigantic star Wars fan. And um, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a story out there because Gene was obviously also a big star Wars fan. And he, he yeah. had a kid that he was really looking forward to because his kid wasn't born when any, I don't think any of the star Wars movies had come out. And then the right. phantom menace, which was a big deal. Again, the kids under 30 don't understand how big it was the year when the new star Wars movie came out, when the phantom menace came out, and 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 Gene Passaway, you know the story I'm talking about? I, I do, I do. Yeah, that that Roger, you know, promised Gene that he would take uh, his son Will to see the movie, and then he followed through on that. He followed through on that promise. Um, I mean, okay. First off, before we before we get into Gene and and, and the the loss uh, when he did pass, because it was it was for 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 the viewing public, I think a lot of people were really shocked by it, and it was it was it was shocking for a lot of people. I can only imagine how the people of the city of Chicago felt because he was kind of an institution there. Um, Before we get to that though, you obviously got to make a lot of good memories um, with these guys and, and, and be a part of things. Where did they shoot that show? Uh, So that was in Chicago. And at the time it was at the CBS station in Chicago. Um, And, you know, the show was syndicated, but we aired uh, the show was syndicated owned by ABC, but we shot it at CBS. Um, So yeah, that was uh, that that's where we, we did it there down right downtown Chicago. A lot of people thought they actually were in a balcony of a movie theater. They actually weren't. It was a set. They, it was a set and there were little chair, tiny little seats that were made to look like the seats down below. And it was, it was all a visual illusion. Did you ever watch movies with those guys? All the time, all yeah? the time. That was, that was part of the job. Yeah. There's a tiny little screening room, downtown Chicago on like the 16th or 17th floor of a building down there. You would never know it was there. Um, and you know, I would see probably two to three movies a week with those guys. Um, you know, in advance of the release date. Yeah, correct. Yep. And, and really, you know, obviously it was one of the best perks of the job, but really we were there as factual backup. You know, these guys were seeing anywhere from five to 10 movies in a week, um, and writing reviews for all these things. And so we were there to basically, after they wrote their review, we'd go through it just to make sure all the facts were correct to make sure that they didn't mix up one movie with another movie, uh, you know, which could be pretty embarrassing, obviously. So, the you know, we were really, really never stopped for you. Did it Dave? <laughs> it really didn't. It really didn't. And I, and I was the one that would do all the research for the movie, you know, the research packets for the movies and, and all sorts of stuff. So that was something I took from, from Letterman as well as doing research packets for Roger and Gene. So would studios send uh, prints and like posters and things like that too? Or was it just a print in a nondescript tin? Like um, what was that? Um, it, it would just be a print that they would send directly to uh, 
to the, the screening room, you know, yeah. uh, but sure they would send, I mean, we used to get all kinds of swag, you know, uh, posters and hats and any of the goofy stuff that, you know, the movie studios like to give out. So, yeah, well, you get a kick out of that if you're a movie fan, which you are. So that's kind of, that's, 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 that's really, really neat. Um, would they talk while they watched the movie or was it pretty silent? Um, the only time I heard them talk was if they were telling somebody else to be quiet and, and not in a mean way, but it was, it, yeah. you know, and to get shushed by Roger Ebert, that, can be kind of intimidating you know oh um, yeah so uh that's the only time i remember them really talking and they absolutely did not talk after the movie whatsoever mm -hmm. um would not talk about the movie until they got on air so it was they had no idea what the other one thought of the movie at all so i love that and and going back i i 100 percent uh, feel that when I think of them and one of them would make a point and then the other one would shift in their chair and get ready to talk at each and they would talk at each other many times, you know, because yep. they wanted to get their points out. Um, I just love that. It was, it was, a uh, again, you look at something, it's a, it's, it's a, a timestamp in history, uh, a culture, cultural timestamp in history, those two guys. Um, yep. and, and you got to be a part of that. It's, it's such a, um, a neat thing that you got to be a part of it. Um, Again, obviously, when Gene passed, that was a that was a big deal. Did you guys decide right away you were going to continue on with the show and figure out uh, a way? You know, it became Ebert and Roper, and there was at a time where um, you know celebrities would be would then come in and be a part of it. Uh, you mm -hmm. guys did a really good job to try and be creative to try and keep the franchise going. Was that an immediate decision, or was that one where there had to be a little bit of time before you decided to keep it going? So when when Gene passed, so I was you know. I was a production assistant when Gene actually, you know, when he passed away. Yeah. So I wasn't necessarily part of the, the, the big decision. Crust. This was Disney. This was, this was really Disney and Roger, because at the end of the day, if Roger didn't want to do it, it was, it was over with, but I think Roger thought it was important to keep the show going. Cause really, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, it was the last of its kind, like they're really, you know, you think about it and as amazing as Letterman was there are still talk shows out there yes. you know there is no movie criticism talk show uh, out there there is it's all the internet now anybody can be a movie critic and in this day you know in that day and age yeah they were the experts where that doesn't happen anymore there aren't movie critics that are that influential any longer yep agreed agreed yeah. um they tried to keep it going and they did keep it going for a while like it was it was it, they kept it going for a while there yeah. Um, you were there when it was, when it was finally, uh, you know, where they decided to call it a day, uh, yep. was it Disney? Was it Roger? Was it both? Um, what was it that stopped the uh, show from, uh, from producing new episodes? Well, so I think it was Roger being, you know, Roger got sick, um, yeah. you know, and that obviously put the show, you know, one, we were all very concerned about Roger, obviously, and yeah. wanted him to be okay. Um, but I think that was the moment, you know, when you lose, when you lose Roger Ebert, you know, you just can't, you can't replace him, you know, and, you know, you could, if you could have, you could have one or the other, but if you don't have either one of them, there's no show, you know, yeah. and that's just the, that's just the unfortunate, the unfortunate truth of it. Um, so I, I think, you know, Roger decided pretty quickly, he wanted to continue it on because he felt like it was an important show and important yeah. to have that discussion. Uh, and he, you know, we did, we went through a lot of movie critics on that. So the first time after Gene passed, it was mostly movie critics that we had on. And that yeah. is very challenging because there aren't a lot of movie critics that are real telegenic. And I don't mean that offensively to anyone, but no. these are guys that spend a lot of time by themselves watching movies, you know? So you got, it's a, it's a real trick to find those that are telegenic and can do a good job and can read a skirt, you know, a teleprompter and then turn and argue with Roger Ebert, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the, that's the, the very difficult thing. So we spent a lot of time with those critics, just trying to get them ready for TV and make them comfortable. And then we had people like Martin Scorsese came on and he did the best of the nineties, I believe the, yeah. yeah, we did a best of the nineties show. Uh, you know, Peter Bogdanovich was on, but the rest of them were mostly movie critics. After Roger got sick, we, and 
Disney decided to go the route of celebrities. So it was, yeah. you know, we had everybody from uh, Jay Leno was a guest host. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, I know we asked Dave uh, and he must've declined or maybe he may never have gotten the request even. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, we had John Mellencamp came on as a guest critic and that was a trip and he smoked all the way up the elevator. It was crazy. <laughs> you know, um, that was a total trip to have him on. And then Fred Willard was a guest host and he, oh. he was absolutely, he was such, such fun. So. So, um, I mean, you're, the way you're talking about all of these things, I mean, it's such, it's so fond. Um, what are you doing now? And do you miss, do you miss broadcasting? Um, you know, there are things I miss about TV. So after, after uh, Ebert and Roper and at the movies was canceled, um, I went on to produce a, a TV show in Chicago, a local TV show in Chicago, a talk show, which was actually very successful in the city and, and was a lot of fun. It was very similar to the environment of Letterman, uh, you know, lots of celebrity guests and things like that. So I went on to do that. Um, That's very and then, cool. What was the name of the show? It was called Windy City Live. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a cool Daily, show. A couple times a week. What was it? It, it was an hour every day, one wow. hour show per day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for a little local TV show, we got a lot of big stars to come in and that was, that was a great thing for us. Um, and, and good for me. I, I, you know, in terms of producing, it was a different kind of producing than I had done on Ebert and Roper. And so uh, it was a welcome, welcome thing and a, a, another high stress job, but a lot of fun. But in terms of what I'm doing now, so I, I while I was working in TV, um, a guy that I knew had started getting into drones and this had been, you know, this has been 10 years ago. And uh, I found it fascinating because I was like, man, who needs a, who needs a helicopter anymore? If you can do this with a drone like you know what do you so anyway i started to get interested in what people could do with drones and how it was going to affect the future and that kind of thing and so now what i do is i work uh i co-own a business where we work with like police departments and fire departments and help them with uh, drones for search and rescue and that sort of thing so it's completely different than what i was doing before but i do run our youtube channel and all that kind of stuff so i still have fun uh making some videos but completely different world than what I was in. And uh, I miss the people. I do not miss the stress. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that's a sentiment that I have heard um, a few times uh, expressed in a few different ways. Um, well, here, let me ask you this. Did you ever dream about the show? Did you dream about the show after the fact? Like, did you, was there? Oh, for pressure? sure. I know. Okay. <laughs> I know that I have. Yeah. And, and, you know, you wake up in a cold sweat, you know, you forgot to do something for the segment or whatever, but yes, absolutely. You were there six months, the right? Like, yeah. like, yeah. And, and, and you had that people who, that seems to be one of the universal things from people who were there a very short period of time, all the way to people who were there at the end. That seems to be one of those ones, those cold sweat pressure dreams. Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, waking absolutely. up thinking that, that something is due or, or you've missed something. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, that seems to be a universal one. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm really, really grateful that, that you have, uh, opened up the memory vault here for me. And again, anybody who was in your class, like Sarah or anybody else who was there, we want to get everybody's, uh, story here. Um, and I'll tell you where it kind of came from. Uh, we had one of our first uh, folks that we had on who was an intern. Um, I had a couple staff members reach out to me and thanked me because they really liked this person and they have wondered whatever happened to them. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's super, super cool. Like I'm, I'm positive uh, that Tommy J and Matt are going to really enjoy seeing you here and hearing all of these things. If they didn't know some of the little, um, uh, you oh, know, I hope so. Details of what you did. I'm, I'm certain that's going to be the case because it was a family there. And, and <laughs> so um, it's really fun to kind of go down and, and, and explore these little nooks and crannies of the, uh, the worldwide pants, um, you know, family. So I really do appreciate you taking time. Um, yeah. I don't have to twist anybody's arm though, because the universal thing seems to be everybody wants to talk about it. It was an exciting time in their life. As we close out here, um, I just want to say thank you very, very much. And if there's anything else that you want to close with here, let, we'll, let's do it. Um, you know, I think for me at first, thank you for having me on, but yeah. um, I, I just, you know, honestly, thank you to everybody that that I got to meet at Letterman and you know 
I, they probably don't know, or maybe you can't feel it, but they had huge impacts on every intern that came through there. And, uh, like I said, if, if I had not had that experience, my life would have been completely different. So I'm very grateful to all of you. Uh, very well said. Uh, David Plummer, intern, 1995, Late Show with David Letterman. Um, this has been another episode of the Letterman Podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, I am Mike Chisholm. Thank you <laughs> and good night. Overcoat and underpants. <laughs>